Hello everyone, it's Cherie. Welcome to my channel. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you're happy. I hope you had a good weekend. I had a good weekend, but it was, um, it was busy and my daughter, she's battling a little cough, so that wasn't fun, but we had a good weekend all the same. So today I wanted to do some patch pages and I wanted to use my little collage fabric pockets that I made. And I do have a video on my channel if you want to check it out. And I wanted to use these Sally Dick and Jane pages. So they're from a 1948 Sally Dick and Jane book. I just showed it to you there in case maybe you're interested in looking it up for yourself. And so I just picked out three pages that were, that I thought would go, that were kind of like winter scenes and that I thought would go nice in a Christmas journal. And I went ahead and grabbed my little um, pocket of cut aparts that I have and I thought I'm going to try and use some of these as well because I got to use them up. And I'm just kind of looking through and thinking about the sizes that they are and you know what size do I want my other page to be and I ran across these little um I think they're like three by threes of graphic 45 and one four by six and I really liked the the colors and I like the images and I I kind of felt like they went really well with those um book pages So I'm basically one, one half of my page is going to be the, uh, the Sally Dick and Jane page. And then the other half I'm going to patch together and just in case nobody's, you know, if you've never seen this before, that's basically what I'm going to do. So I, I just use different types of mediums to patch it together, you know, papers and whatnot and see how it comes out. So I kind of had an idea in my head what I was going for. I knew I wanted to use ledger and uh, I knew I wanted to use up some of my little cut aparts. So I just kind of matched them to the page that I thought that they would complement the best. And so the first thing I'm going to do is make myself a few hinges. And I'm just going to use my little tea dyed, this tea dyed paper here. And I'm just going to score it and I basically do like a half an inch and then if I feel like I need to chop some off, which I do, I'll just cut it off before I use it. So I'm just going to cut these out so that I'll have my three little hinge pieces for my patch page. And if I end up repeating myself, I'm sorry. This is actually the second time that I did this voiceover. And when I have to do it more than one time, I kind of get a little flabbergasted between remembering what I've said and what I haven't said. So I'm going to go ahead and just take that um, book page and I'm just going to throw some glue stick on that hinge there and glue it down. And now I could have extended my my Sally Dick and Jane page there if I wanted to have it the full eight and a half height but I like to have different size pages in my journals so I decided to go ahead and cut it off but I have like extended the page before so that's going to obviously be one one page and then the other page is going to be the one that I patched together. And so then these, um, these are the pages that I plan on using my pockets, my little fabric collage pockets with as well. So my hinge was just a little bit too, too wide. So I wanted to trim some of it off. And so I've got my little cut apart and I know that I don't want my page to be any uh, wider than six inches and then I'm just going to go ahead and kind of dig through my leftover pieces of scrapbooking paper and see if I can find something that will 
complement my little cut apart card there. And I look at it for both the front and the back because sometimes you know the front will go beautifully but the back just doesn't make sense. So I was just trying to find a piece that would work for both of them, the front and the back. And then I just decided just to pull out a few that I thought I may want to use. And I liked this piece because I liked those flowers on the back. I felt like they gave, you know, like another busyness to that solid green there. A nice little pattern to go with that green. And I liked the, um... I like the holly on the on the front part there. That little border. So I went with that. Then I'm just gonna trim it down and make sure that it's at six inches. So now I was like, okay, uh, I think I'm going to go with my ledger and I'm just going through some cut aparts that I have that are just leftover pieces and whatnot and seeing if anything in there will fit. And if it doesn't, then I'll typically just grab me a new piece of ledger and use it. But I always like to go for my leftover pieces first, my scraps. And I really like this one. Um, now you could have, instead of putting it on the bottom, I could have put it on the top. There I realized, oh no, I made a mistake. I was sticking it on the wrong way. Yeah, you, you can't put it on the top. There's like so many different ways that you can do these pages. But for this one, I, I liked it on the bottom. So I just stuck it down on the bottom. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that it's all straight on that side. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue it. So like looking at this, I would, I'm thinking, you know, I could have even, if I wanted to, which probably would have been a fun idea, instead of trimming off that ledger, I could have just folded it up so that it would be like a flip down on that. And that would have been, that would have been fun and interesting too. So you would have this nice long piece to, to write on. But I didn't do that. I cut it off, which is, you know, totally fine too. I still like how it looks, but that's something to remember in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and just stitch this together. Now you can just use glue if you have a good strong glue for your patch pages. Um, I have used glue before. But I personally like the look of the stitches on the pages. So I'm just going to stitch her, stitch her together. And so there's the back and I feel like, um, like it works, you know. And then there's my inside. And I was looking for which pocket I thought I may want to use on this page. So that's how I'll do it. I will just, um, at this point in time, I wasn't sure if I was going to stitch them or glue them in. And I will like reinforce that Sally Dick and Jane page just because it is, you know, vintage and it's not exactly, um, super sturdy. So I'll probably like just put some tea dyed paper on there and then... I decided to just uh, glue it in. I'm just going to glue it in. But at this point in time, I wasn't sure if I was going to want to stitch it or if I was going to want to glue my pocket in. But I'm going to glue it in. Now I'm moving on to the second one. And I just, I really like these, um, these pages in a journal just because you know that's fun and interesting and it's not just a pretty page to look at now once I add the pocket to it it also has a function so um, 
yeah, I just, I don't know, I really like them. You guys let me know what you think if you like them or not. So I went back to this piece and I was thinking, do I want to use this? And then I was like, no, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do it. I do want something red, but I kind of changed my mind and just felt like I wanted just something a little different. And then I found this one and I felt like it complemented both the front and the back. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to use this piece because it goes, it goes pretty good. So yeah, if you've never done these, I do recommend trying it. If you, you know, obviously if you feel like it, it's an excellent way to use up your scrapbooking papers. And obviously your little cut aparts that you may not know what to do with, or if you're tired of, you know, making it, making them a pocket or just using them as a decoration, you can use them for a patch page piece and make them part of your pages so i'm just gonna same as the other one i'm cutting it down to about six six inches wide and i'm gonna stick with the the same format as before i'm just gonna piece them together and then give myself some ledger on the bottom And when you're doing the ledger with the lines like that, it makes it really easy to keep it straight. And uh, I like to put my little glue on the, the line, right in the line where I know where it's supposed to go. It's, <laughs> it's better than guessing, oh man, is this going to be straight or not? Sometimes I'll take out my little T-squared ruler if I don't have any lines to follow and kind of draw me a little line in pencil just to make sure that it's, you know, not completely wonky. So yeah, so that is my second one. And if you didn't, you know, another way you could do it is if you didn't want to use your hinges, if you had like just a, a long skinny strip of scrapbooking paper, you could just score that and then put whatever page, your your book page on your scrapbooking paper and then patch a different, cut, you know, patch on top of your long scrapbooking paper. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, so you guys let me know if you like these patch pages and I will keep patch page videos coming. I really enjoy doing them. So this one's a little bit different because it is not, it, uh, you know, the 3x3 three three or whatever the measurement is. It's a 4x6. So I kind of had to think about it a little bit differently. And I really liked this scrap as soon as I saw it. I thought that it would go perfect. I love that checkered there. And I was just making sure that the back sides were going to make sense. And there, the greens aren't obviously a um, a complete match. They're two different colored greens, but they you don't look at them and go, oh my gosh, that just doesn't go at all. It complements each other. So I was happy with that. And because this this piece here is a little bit taller, obviously my um, my ledger is going to be a little bit shorter. So it's a totally different look. So you could use all different sizes. You could even use the little three by four um, cut apart pieces as well. Or you wouldn't even have to use cut apart. You just use scrapbook paper. So typically whenever I am in my craft room, I have my phone in front of me listening to a video. And a lot of the times if you see my arm reach forward like that, it's because I'm like skipping an ad or something like that. Because I like to craft along with other people while they're crafting or just listen, you know, listen to people while I'm crafting. So yeah, so that is the third one. And I really like how that one turned out too. So see how that, that the greens obviously are not the same shade green. But you don't look at it and think that's it just doesn't go at all. 
you know, it still complements each other. So I could totally like, if I was journaling on that page, that more solid green page, you could totally like put your little four by six photo on there or whatever. And then, um, you know, journal on the bottom and have some little decoration on the other side. So it's kind of like, you know, mapping out your little journaling for you if you wanted to look at it that way. So yeah, so that's the third one. And then here's another pocket. And I might have said it in this video, or maybe I did it in the last voiceover. I don't know, but those pockets, I did um, record a video for making them. You can check it out on my channel if you'd like to. And then I went ahead and stitched that one as well. So now I'm just going to show them all to you, and I think that pretty much wraps it up. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that y'all had a good weekend and I really hope that y'all have a blessed day. Thank you so much for watching.